Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about modern day pocket pistol mouse guns and quite possibly the modern day Liberator pistol. We have two different flavors of brand new offerings from Beretta USA. On top I have the Model 21A, sometimes affectionately called the, the, uh, the Bobcat. On the bottom I have the Tomcat, which is the 32 ACP version of the same pistol. But we're going to talk a little bit about these, what makes them different. It's a really cool new offering from Beretta USA. But before we get into today's video, guys, please take a moment to like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy our content, because a surprisingly small number of you who watch our content take that brief moment to click that subscribe button. So please do that now. And with all that being said, let's get started with today's video. Guys, please swing by and check out Big Daddy Unlimited BDU. They help support us here at the Military Arms Channel with products and things like that so we can continue to bring you content. There's a link in the video description down below that'll take you to the Mac blog and website. Please follow that link and from there you'll find a link to Big Daddy Unlimited and try them out just for 99 cents. You can see what they're all about. In essence, they're just like a big online store that has amazing prices. So please, again, check out BDU. What we call mouse guns today are pocket pistols from yesteryear. It turns out that right around the turn of the century when self-loading pistols became popular, calibers like 22 long rifle, 25 ACP, 32 ACP were really popular carry calibers. And little tiny pistols were made by a number of different companies. And most gentlemen would carry a little pistol about this size in their pocket somewhere just to have something for self-defense. But today we mostly carry nine millimeters. Some folks will go 380, maybe a few folks will go 32, and even fewer will go 22 on their daily carry guns. Nine millimeter by far is the most common caliber. Nine millimeter requires a slightly larger pistol, although we have seen nine millimeter handguns sh uh, shrink in size considerably over time. But the mouse gun still sticks around because there's folks out there like myself who enjoy them. Mouse guns, historically speaking, I've never had one that ran 100% of the time. You take something like a, you know, a Glock 19 or a CZ 75, you, you, you'll probably rarely, if ever, clear a malfunction. With guns like this, malfunctions tend to be kind of commonplace. Now, sometimes when you shoot them a lot more and start to break them in, they'll start to work a little bit better. But what's neat about these two pistols? Well, first of all, it's obvious, Beretta's starting to make them in flat, dark earth. They're tactical! So now you got a tactical mouse gun. The top is the 22 long rifle, the bottom being the 32 ACP. Not only are they flat dark earth, they're offered in um, just regular blued or maybe a painted black finish, I'm not sure, but like a regular blued finish with wooden grips. But I, I saw these come into Copper Custom and thought they were really, really cool. I mean, I never thought I would see a tactical mouse gun. But beyond that, they have threaded barrels. <laughs> And this is entirely too much fun. <laughs> so there's the threaded barrel on the 22. And here's the threaded barrel on the 32. And yes, the guns we checked many times before we started filming, they're empty. And so now they have their little threaded barrels. Now this, this was something that people would do aftermarket sometimes. It was not something that you would commonly see. But if you take the little 22, for example, this is a Jim Tech suppressor. This thing is all aluminum, it weighs almost nothing. And it screws right onto the end of the 22's barrel here. It's a half by 28 thread. Both are half by 28 threads, so don't accidentally put a 22 can on your 32. And there you have a very tactical flat dark earth 22 caliber Beretta. For this one, there are some suppressors out there that are like the erectors. You know, you can kind of add and remove baffles to make them longer and shorter, but I just have this old AAC can laying around and it goes on this pistol like this. <laughs> now you can definitely get, I mean, if I put a Griffin Armament K-Can on here, it would be considerably shorter as well. It would only be about that long, but that gives you the idea. Now, these are really, really interesting pistols because of their ability to be suppressed. They operate both with uh, single stack magazines. They have a heel, well, kind of a mid heel release. It's a button on the side, left-hand side of the gun. You can draw out your single stack magazine. Both guns feed from the same type of magazine. 
So what I found with these guns, now I haven't shot them extensively. I, I was just playing with them uh, and uh, you know, I was in, trying to figure out what ammunition they liked and just how reliable they were. And with both of them, I was having ma the occasional malfunction depending on the ammunition I was using. But we're gonna load these magazines up, do a little bit of shooting with them, with the cans on them, show you. Uh, they're kind of cool. I mean, they're really interesting little guns. Do I think they're good self-defense weapons? Maybe if you get one that works 100%, if you break it in. But no, they're really, they're really not. They're more or less just for fun. So let's load them up and do a little bit of shooting with them and let's see how reliable they are today. We brought out a different, uh, a couple different types of ammunition. We don't have a whole lot to pick from these days. We have some Federal here and this is 36 grain bolt pack stuff. Then we have some warmer CCI mini mags and about the only 32 ACP I keep around is this S and B stuff. And um, it's got a little 73 grain bullet in it. So let's load them up, do a little bit of shooting, see how reliable they are. I'll show you how they take apart. There's a little trick to taking them apart if you want to pick up one of these guns. And uh, yeah, we'll just have some fun with them. The Model 21A has a single stack magazine that has a little tab on the side you can gauge with a fingernail to load it. And it will accept eight rounds. The problem is if you put eight rounds into the magazine, Did I get it? Wow, I had to beat it in there. I, I, that's the first time I got it to lock since I've had the pistol. So I think I got eight rounds to actually lock into place. You're gonna have to beat that magazine into the gun. Now you're gonna press your lever to pop your barrel up. The safety is off. Drop a single round into the chamber like that. Close the barrel. And here comes the first malfunction. All right, failure to feed. So what I've learned with this gun, and that's with a mini mag, is that if you have too much upward pressure on the slide from a full magazine, it's not gonna fully cycle. It did kick the empty out, but it didn't come far enough back to pick up the next round of the magazine. All right, here we go again. This time I fire single action here. And she ran the rest of them out perfectly. So she might be breaking in a little bit. It's been so cold lately, I haven't been able to shoot more than 100 rounds out of it. But um, yeah, there's no recoil impulse at all. It's pretty accurate. I'm hitting a little steel plate out there that's about 15 yards away. And uh, yeah, just a really interesting handgun. For safety, for those people that are concerned with it, this, this would make a lot of sense. Uh, they offer them in 380 pistols as well which tend to be a little bit more reliable. Push that button up, be able to load it. You can also unload it from that position. So you would drop your magazine out, remove your magazine, and then pop your barrel open. Any round that was in there, take it out. And now you can visually see that your weapon is clear. Pretty interesting concept in design. Very neat, very Beretta, <laughs> and pretty cool. Let's take the guns apart. Both of these guns disassemble in the exact same way and talk about some of their features. These are double action, single action pistols, which means the hammer's at rest right now and the trigger is forward. If I pull this trigger, it'll draw the hammer to the rear, fire the gun, it will cycle, and then the next shot will be single action. Trigger's back, hammer's back. It'll be a much lighter trigger pull to get it to fire the next time. The guns do have manual safeties on them. They're 1911 style, which is right here by my index finger. They do not have a decocker. So if you want to decock this pistol, the best thing to do is to open the pistol up. There's a button that allows you to, to do that and then put your hammer down. And the rotating barrel is one of the really cool features of these guns. Let me show you how that works. So you have a little lever that's right behind the trigger guard on the left-hand side of the pistol. If you pull this lever forward, that barrel will spring up. So this makes the gun safe. You can load a full magazine into the gun. And we'll do this here when we shoot it. Load a full magazine into the gun, take another round, drop it into the barrel, lock your barrel down. The gun is ready to fire in double action mode or you can quickly thumb it back to single action. Again, to make it safe, just simply 
open up that barrel and then you can safely put that hammer down without having to be concerned with an accidental discharge. Now to take the gun apart, I'm going to take the magazine out. You have that little button right there. I'm going to pop her out. I'm going to go ahead and flip this lever to open up the barrel. I'm going to pull the barrel forward like that. All right. I'm going to cock the pistol. And now I'm just going to kind of lift up. I'm going to pull back and lift up on the front of the slide. It's going to be held back here by two short slide rails. So I'm going to kind of pull up and out and the slide will come right off. The recoil spring and everything like that is captive inside the frame. And this is as far as you need to go for the regular, regular field maintenance of the Tomcat and Bobcat pistols. To put it back together, a little bit of a trick. All right. So you're going to go at it. There's little tiny slide rails back here on both sides. And they're, you know, not even a quarter of an inch in length. You're going to come down at an angle so you can see how the slide rails are engaging and push back and down. And then you must push the front of the slide down into the square notch. Come on, you little guy. Just like that. And she's back together. Close your barrel. Function check. That simple. This is the 21A, the 22 long rifle pistol. And next to it, I have two different silencers. This is the Gemtech and this is the Bowers Biddy. <laughs> this is probably one of the smallest 22 caliber cans out there. Unless you're running it wet or with wire pulling gel, it really doesn't have much in the way of sound suppression. Maybe on a full rifle with a 60 inch barrel, it might take the, the sound down just a little bit, but on a handgun with a barrel this short, it's just not really all that effective. So let's see a show of hands on which can you would like to see on the, uh, the, 20, the 21A here. All right, the biddy it is. The weapon is clear. I'm going to go ahead and unscrew the thread protector. These come in little soft cases. You can throw your thread protector in your soft case so you don't lose it. Or put it someplace safe. Take the thread protector off. We'll take the Bowers Biddy, screw it on. Definitely, definitely we'll need ears for this. Now the barrel's short enough on these that the, the rounds never achieve supersonic velocity. So with the Gem Tech, it's actually pretty quiet. All right, the biddy's in place. Insert my magazine, hit that lever, pop that barrel open, put my round in the chamber. Gun is now ready to fire. All right, Mr. Biddy, show us what you got. Now, what's interesting is the sights are completely obscured by the can. There's, there's, this is total guesstimation at trying to use the sights at this point, which are just a V-notch cut in the rear and the shallowest of front sight blades. Yeah, I hit the plate. I'm excited, guys. This little gun's running perfectly. Last time I had it out, when it, it would fire the first round, the next round would jam into the barrel hood. I'd clear that out and it always finished the magazine. It was always that second round that would, would jam into the barrel hood and not feed. So I'm having really, really good luck with it today. I'm getting excited. Maybe the little guy's breaking in. So I can go ahead and make sure the weapon's clear. I've removed the magazine, popped the barrel. We can see that the weapon's safe. I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew the biddy. And put the gym tech on there. And this will give you an idea of a more practical can for a gun this size. So why do we call this the liberator of modern day pistols? If you go back to World War II, the liberator was, was a gun made by guide lamp that was stamped in construction and fired 45 ACP and wasn't much bigger than this. And it was used to be dropped behind enemy lines so that partisans could pick the weapons up, basically shoot an enemy soldier, take their more powerful weapon, and then continue on the fight for freedom. So that's why we're kind of jokingly call these liberator pistols. Uh, although as of today, they're actually far more reliable. Now the, the liberator was not a self-loading pistol. It was a manually loaded handgun that stored rounds in the magazine 
or where a magazine would be in the grip, but you'd still have to put one round and manually at a time, pull a striker to the rear and things like that. All right, so we'll load up a magazine here and I'll be right back and we'll do a little shooting with the Gym Tech. I think I might take my ears off for this one because it, uh, it is quite a bit more quiet than the Biddy can. All right, here we go. Take my magazine, insert it into the pistol. I'm only putting seven in the magazine so I don't have to pound it in. Pop my barrel open. Throw my 22 CCI mini mag in there. And let's see how quiet this little guy is. Pretty quiet. Is that just one rounder? That's wild, dude. I know I saw two things fly out like one live round. There's two empty cases. It didn't pick up a round. It's almost like a round shot out of the magazine. I thought I, that's why I looked around. I thought I saw two things fly out, but let's see. All right, so there was that reliability thing I was telling you about. That was kind of weird behavior. Uh, let's do some shooting with the 32 ACP pistol. This has an older uh, advanced armament corp uh, silencer on it. This is the Echo 9. This is the very first silencer I ever purchased for a handgun. What you'll have to do is that both pistols do have a half by 28 thread, but you have to use a 9 millimeter can on the 32s. Somebody probably makes a 32 ACP can. I'm not sure who that would be. So you're going to run a 9mm can on your little uh, 32 ACP Liberator here made by Beretta. Same thing. Load magazine in. Pop that barrel up. Throw a round in. Weapon is ready. Let's see how she works. <laughs> I can't even see the steel plate. Way too big. This is a total Hail Mary. I'll let you guys see the whole gun work. So flawless function with the 32. I have found that the 32 tends to be more reliable than the 22. Um, so you have to remember also that these are fixed barreled handguns. They're not browning type actions. They don't move to the rear when the gun cycles. So when you do put a can on these, you want to make sure uh, in the case of this uh, pistol, because you can put a booster on here. You do not want to put a booster on this silencer or the silencer you use on the 32 ACP pistol. When you're talking about the 22s, they don't generally have boosters in them. They're always using fixed barrels because almost every 22 I've ever seen, every 22 I've ever seen has been a blowback operation. Both of these are blowback operated, again, with fixed barrels. My trigger broke. Let's see what happened. Feels like a return spring is broken. Double action doesn't work anymore. The 
Yeah, there's no spring pressure on that trigger. Trigger won't reset. It's broke. And double action no longer works. I can break anything. Well, guys, I could break a steel ball, and even though it's not a steel ball, I did manage to break the 32 ACP pistol. We broke the action open, took a look inside with a flashlight, I'll show you guys a picture of what we found. There is the trigger and a pin that goes across, and there's two little horseshoe pieces that the pin rides in. It looks like it snapped both of those off, which is why the trigger no longer works in the handgun. Maybe 100 rounds into the gun it broke. Uh, most of that's suppressed. Perhaps the increased back pressure from the silencer increases the slide velocity and increases the wear and tear on the internal trigger components, but you think Beretta would take that into consideration when manufacturing the gun. So hopefully it's just one of those bad luck things that I seem to always encounter. I'll contact Beretta USA and find out if it's something that's going to continue to happen. In that case, it really stinks. Or if it's just, again, my bad luck. With the 22, we've had mixed results. Every once in a while we'll get a magazine to cycle completely with no issues and then other times we'll have several malfunctions in a magazine. You're going to find that the 22 is probably going to be pretty ammo specific. So if you pick one up, try different types of ammunition when different types of ammunition become available. We're in the ammo craze of 2021. But uh, yeah, it should work mostly okay. It's going to truly kind of be a liberator pistol. You might get one shot off before you have a malfunction to clear and uh, you might wind up getting liberated yourself. So anyway, uh, fun guns, interesting. I've read of problems of frames cracking and stuff on the 32s. I've never seen that particular part break before. Again, we'll, follow, we'll circle back with you on that one. <laughs> but meanwhile, uh, we're going to fire off the last magazine here out of the 21A. Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel so we can continue to bring you honest, unbiased, as humanly possible information, please consider becoming part of our Patreon family. We've built a wonderful community over there. Lots of folks interacting. You have direct access to me. I respond to all private communications. And we have early release videos, blog posts, things like that. So link down below. Please join our family. Also right here on YouTube, little join button. Click that join button and consider supporting us again right here on YouTube. Last but not least, guys, please swing by. Check out coppercustom.com where I picked up my little pistols here. Thank you for 13 years of support. And let's see if we can get through a full magazine here of some CCI mini mags with no failures. You guys betting people? Let's find out. Well, you know it. It worked perfectly. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.